uh, there is the fact that writing has, can have an ornamental form and the ornamental form can be extremely aesthetic and that applies to both our cases but in very different ways uh, and then there can be as we might say more ordinary writing more ordinary writing uh, is less aesthetic than these very highly decorative forms but although it's less aesthetic we must not exclude the aesthetic element anywhere because uh, the aesthetic is part of making things legible a more aesthetic form of writing is also easier to read so we are very much focused on aesthetic matters it, with writing as a whole uh, whatever the purpose for which it's used may be, only if we are writing personal notes to ourselves are we likely to do something that has very little aesthetic component. Uh, the fourth thing I would say before going further is that um, I've got these two traditions I'm talking about today and e Egyptian is um, a hieroglyphic tradition there is one other very major hieroglyphic tradition, which is the, um, the Maya tradition. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about it, simply to say that it is another way of using writing which is very distinctive. And I would argue that the phenomena I'm talking about in China have a parallel for that, but they are, it's a relatively short-lived parallel. Now, in talking about the origins of writing, it's important to think about the aesthetic environment from which writing emerged, and that's what I'm going to try to do. So I'm starting both the halves of the lecture with examples from before writing is known, uh, but uh, not many centuries before, before but what the environment was before writing appeared. Um, and then I shall go a long way down in time and consider complex uses later on, which where I see a parallel between Egypt and China. And in that case, the aesthetic component remains important. 